the makings of an architectural masterpiece by those who have no idea what they're doing all right so the versa tube RV carport that is leg number one I call him a rib goes up and around comes down but look at this I cut it and I'm going to put the base which is what that is right there that's the base is going to be attached to my 4x4 up there all the way down there now why am I doing it this way instead of just running the metal post all the way down because in front of this RV is going to be a enclosed patio so I wanted to make sure that I could enclose it and attach the stuff to a 4x4 is so much easier than trying to attach it to those metal legs so that's what it did what's interesting is when I put this up this is 36 feet long when I put up these 4x4s I had to make sure that they didn't run into my window opening you know all my little convenient things I had to make sure I could open my door you know over here to the furnace or whatever got to make sure I get access to that if I need to there's enough space to get to those outlets that door was still open that one there I lose access to that but I have access to the other side and I have a little tray in there that that pulls out and covers everything so it's all each post is perfectly placed as you can tell these two are close together but these two are not and in fact there's a post missing right there because that post is going to be a short post and be part of the floor the reason being I could not put a post here and keep it in between my refrigerator and my door because then I could open up my door all the way I could only open up part way and I wanted to be able to open it all the way so I just left that out as you can see we have all kinds of braces Yesterday winds were gusting 45 50 mile an hour today. There's like no wind Now I got to put together more of these ribs and tough parts putting them on will probably Take them down to this end Lift them up have someone on top of the trailer hand it off to them on the short end They'll walk down parallel with the person on the other side all the way down and then there'll be more of those footings or those bases more of those guys along the base here and then doing that that may um, and that way they can just plop it on and then screw it on with the uh, self tapping screws so on the VersaTube you lay it down on the ground per instructions that's going to become the back side of the trailer See, we can see them a couple of screws there, self tapping screws, a couple there. I know that's more than a couple, but you get the point. And then this one, that piece there, the reason why the duct tape is there because that was the cut edge. That piece is actually goes from right here all the way down to there so we cut it right there that's why it's a short piece and that like I said is going on the uh, that ridge beam there or not the ridge beam the uh, beam 
the header, whatever you want to call it. Like I said, I am no carpenter. I am no architectural genius. I'm no engineer. But this looks awesome. If you also notice, there's a slope. Well, the reason why we have a slope is because water has to run somewhere. And when the roofing panels go on, the roofing panels just so happened to be the exact same roofing panels as what's on this barn. The exact same color. So I got planned it that way. The way that this roof is here with these uh, crevices, if you will, with the ridges. These ridges flow this way on the, on the uh, carport. So because they flow that way, that's why you slope it. And this slope will make sure that all the wind, I mean all the rain, and the snow melt off and all that ends up going down to that end, which I'll catch all that rain for water. Every pole is perfectly straight. Let me show you a couple of the tools we use to help keep these straight because that was pretty cool. One of them is that strap uh, in there. We just tied it on there just to hold it in place. See the string right there? Well, it wasn't there earlier. It actually, we used a string to put right here. And then we put that back post on, put him up, leveled him, and then drew our string as tight as we could. And then with each post that we put, starting with this one, the second one, we would draw a line on it, cut it. Draw a line on that post and cut it. And work our way down and put our posts up on top that post there is 10 feet and our headers we went with 10 feet because each one is about nine foot and like nine inches this leveling tool was gold bad we only had one but basically it works kind of like this check this out so it works like this this is a rubber band so you take the rubber band and you wrap it all the way around the post and clip it there and then that tells you if you are level there and level there it's not too bad we only had one of these, so we had to keep taking it off and putting it on. If we had multiple of these, that sure would have been nice. Instead of taking your level and leveling this side and then leveling that side, this was a beauty. The rope that we have is just to help hold it in place. The winds were coming from back here. By having this up, it kind of gave us some support because all of our legs... We're going this way for our support, and they're just resting in the ground. And so that keeps them from coming this way, but it doesn't keep them from moving the other way. This here seems to help a lot. This rib here will keep that one, because that's all strapped down, so he's not moving. Plus all these guys are all screwed in and nailed in and all that on the bottom. These water totes on their side make fantastic workshop tables. Saw is what we use to cut our 4x4s. And of course they're all pressure treated. The reason why we use this saw is because we wanted to make sure with this being 3.5 inches that we got that cut. The, uh, the other saws that we had would not make that cut. We'd have to do another cut, and then that would leave a, leave a little um, ridge in the center, and it just doesn't make a clean cut. This thing here, it's a Harbor Freight Special, so it was only 120 bucks or so, you know, with your coupon and, and all that stuff. So one thing I got to say, though, about this saw, this bag back here is absolutely worthless. We still end up with sawdust everywhere, as you can kind of see. 
But anyhow, this is the saw we used to cut every, to cut these steel poles. Let me show you what we use for that. So to cut those steel poles, we use this guy, another Harbor Freight special. This is called a Drill Master 2 horsepower 14 inch industrial cut off saw. And this blade is a blade that's designed to cut steel and it did a fantastic job. We obviously had sparks and all that flying everywhere but this chop saw did its job. It was definitely worth it I thought. Now because it again was only like what dad say a hundred bucks or so again the Harbor Freight discounts coupons all that stuff so it was uh there you go read it upside down it's for grit and uh, the blade did fantastic so if I'm in the mood to cut other metals I've got that guy there that can do it for me so that's what we use to cut that Versa 2 blade right there and then we just took a file and just deburred it and double check make sure it still fit on the legs and everything fits perfect here's your self tapping bolt that comes or screw that comes with it self tapping bolt comes with the Versa tube I don't know the size but it came with it so they worked wonders now that leg or the base the metal piece going across the 4x4 to anchor that down we are going to use the holes that are currently in the footing the base and those holes like I showed you in one of the other videos are just like that hole right there so what we're going to do is utilize some drill bits some auger bits these are long enough and we need the three quarter inch one so I got different sizes and we'll use that to drill that hole all the way through that four by and then when we drill that all the way through then we'll bolt the whole thing to the four by so the leg where are we at? The leg or the uh, rib there, the, uh, the rafter, would then be connected to the base, the footing, which would then be bolted on to, would be screwed on with self tapping screws. And then that will be bolted on to the 4x4. The 4x4 is all nailed and connected to 4x4 posts. So the VersaTube RV carport is going up. So that kind of completes this video and the next video that I show will probably show all those ribs up and maybe even some of the uh, some of the sheets on there the metal sheets the metal roofing so stay tuned for some more amazing work here on the homestead this is Jeff with Arizona Hot Homestead I'm living in that RV right there and we got some amazing architectural carpentry work going on by an unlicensed I have no idea what the heck I'm doing I make it up as I go along non-expert <laughs>